um, the conference will start off, please. I'm very excited to welcome you to this special session organized to herald the formal commencement of the 2021-2022 legal year of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. As we all know, the 2021-2022 legal year of the court has long commenced from Monday, the 13th of September, 2021. What we're doing today is just in compliance with our age-long tradition of assembling to give account of our performance in the outgoing legal year and also confer the rank of senior advocate on deserving senior lawyers in both the advocacy and the academic categories. There is several reason to say that 2020 and 2021 have been very eventful and overwhelmingly panicking too. It is mainly by the grace of the Almighty God that we are all alive to make this new legal year in peace and good health. So many pleasant and unpleasant things have happened, but we are still firm on our feet. In all, we thank the Almighty God for his enduring mercies in our lives. The coronavirus pandemic that fiercely ravaged the entire world in the whole of 2020 had a devastating carryover uh, to 2021 with the ferocious third wave making our hearts to beat at a supersonic velocity. On a rather unfortunate note, I wish to state that the protracted strike embarked upon by the Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria, Jusin, came with excruciating impact on smooth dispensation of justice as all courts activities across the country were paralyzed for over two months. The first time experienced such unpleasant occurrence in a very long time. Why? I believe the bitter lessons we learned in the course of the avoidable strike will definitely help us to amend our ways, re-strategize, and forge a more potent front to combat everything or anything that could unleash such unfortunate incident on the nation's judiciary in the future. The executive and legislative arms of government must at all times work closely with the judiciary 
to make the country way better on the scale of justice, fairness, and the equity on all fronts. We, as just one arm of government, cannot do it alone, no matter how much ingenuity we are endowed with. A better synergy by the executive, legislature, and judiciary will definitely present a potent force to combat any untoward situation that could threaten the peace, unity, and the progress of this country. As customer in the Supreme Court, this epoch location will be surprised with the swearing of those senior members of the Nazimba Association who have, in all ramifications and by all standards, excelled in the practice of law and the subsequently conferred with the rank of senior advocate in Nigeria. Expectedly, an occasion of this nature calls for great celebration, but even in the midst of that, we must endeavor to spare a moment of time to have a sober reflection and introspection on the journey thus so far. Through the journey, uh, through the rough tide, Though the rough tide cannot be convincingly adjudged to be smooth, the good thing is that it has been favorably adventurous as we have learned so, uh, so much to guide us through the webs and tapes of life, particularly our constitutional responsibility of adjudication. In those areas that we have excelled, we have to commend ourselves and as well as endeavor to increase the tempo of the work. While in the areas of obvious shortcomings, we shall do a quick self-assessment and forge ahead with the right mindset and disposition to attain more impactful results. The Supreme Court, and by extension the Nigerian judiciary, has fared well in the hour to go legally even though the horizon was literally roughened by overwhelming challenges. The prayers, admonitions, and support of women and Nigerians to a very large extent gave us the courage to remain steadfast and resolute in making a memorable impact on the Nigerian judicial uh, landscape. As this new legal year unfolds, we would like to assure you that we are determined to work assiduously to evolve a judiciary that will remarkably be the pride of Nigerians, home and abroad. As we celebrate this success achieved in the first legal year, we also wholeheartedly felicitate with our eminent legal practitioners who were thoroughly screened, examined, and found worthy in character and the practice to be conferred with the highly coveted rank of senior advocate to Nigeria by the Legal Practitioners Privileges Committee. The 2021-22 legal year, which ended on Friday, the 23rd of July, 2021, was relatively outstanding, though with rough edges that have to be smoothened in the course of this new legal year. I must say with pride and the acceleration that during the outgoing year, we experienced so many positive heartwarming developments in the Nigerian judiciary. For the first time in the history of the Supreme Court, we swore in eight honorable justices to fill the positions vacated by our esteemed colleagues who retired, as well as enlarging the profile of our judicial strength by increasing the number of justices to an all-time high number of 20. That indeed was first of its kind in our history. If for anything, 
that interest in development has to a large extent increased our adjudicatory capacity and reduced the number of nights we now stay awake as a result of workload. That is also cherry news to the retinue of appellants that throng the court on a regular basis. From the flip side of the events that dotted the legal year under review, I would like to say, rather on a sad note, that we do not have it all rossy, as very unfortunate occurrences delighted our joy and presented some pensive moments to contend with. Very unfortunate as it was, we lost one of our respected colleagues, uh, the respected, yes, Honorable Justice Umwali Salvesta Nguta, the ASE. See about a time. His demise came on Sunday, the 7th of March 2021, just a few days to his well deserved retirement from the Supreme Court bench, which would have been on Tuesday, the 30th of March 2021. It actually occurred while preparations for his valedictory court session to herald his exit were in top gear. That singular event threw the entire judicial, uh, judicial community into a protracted mourning to further exacerbate the trend of misfortunes. One of our eight newly sworn in justices, Honorable Justice Samuel Osage, JSC, also passed on after protracted illness uh, in the uh, wee hours of Tuesday the 28th of September 2021, precisely 10 months after his elevation to the Supreme Court bench. My humbly have your indulgence to join me in standing up to observe a minute silence in honor of our departed colleagues and acquaintances. May their gentle soul rest in peace. Amen. So still on a very sad note, I must say we were jolted with the embarrassing news of the invasion of the official residence of one of our brother justices, Honorable Justice Mary Peter Audley on Friday the 29th of October 2021 by men suspected to be security operatives acting on a such warrant for full tabular obtained from an Abuja magistrate court under questionable circumstances. I must make it known to all and listen to that we have had rough dosage of such embarrassments and the harassments of our judicial officers across the country. And we can no longer take any of such shenanigans. The silence of the judiciary should never be mistaken for stupidity or weakness. By the nature of our work, we are conservative, but not conquered species, and they should not be pushed further than this by any individual, institution, or agency of the much. With time, those taking the judiciary as a mere weak will soon realize that it is from the calmest seas, we often experience the fiercest storms. The time to oppress, suppress, and intimidate judicial officers is gone. No one 
irrespective of his or her status or position in the country, should test our will because the consequence of such unwarranted uh, provocation will be too dire to bear. We shall begin to resist any clandestine <coughs> attempt to silence or ridiculous to oblivion. Nigeria, to the best of my knowledge, is not a lawless society. We should begin to, th uh, to do things that will project us favorably and rightly too to the international community. No law permits anyone to invade, subdue, or overawe any Nigerian citizen in his or her residence with a flimsy, fraudulently obtained such one. We are making efforts now to ensure that henceforth every such or arrest warrant must be issued with the knowledge and approval of the chief judge of the respective state or federal high court, as the case may be. On Monday, 22nd, March 2021, our own Honorable Justice Ola Boderos Vaivo, JSCC of us, retired, also took a deserved vow from the Supreme Court bench after offering the very best of his indignity and legal proficiency to the service of his fatherland. There's certainly no doubt that we are going to miss him and his invaluable contributions to our jurisprudence. Also, in the course of the outgoing legal year, precisely on Monday, the 28th of June, 2021, we swore in for the first time 18 honorable justices of the Court of Appeal. The Federal Capital Territory Judiciary also witnessed exchange of leadership button twice within the space of one year. First, Honorable Justice Salih Sugarba Abdullahi was sworn in as a substantive chief judge. And later in August 2021, Honorable Justice Hussain Baba mounted the saddle as a result of the retirement of the former, who now is the administrator of the National Judicial Institute. The Corruption and the Financial Crime Cases Trial Monitoring Committee, COMPRIMCO, which was set up in 2018, under the chairmanship of the retired justice of the Supreme Court, Honorable Justice Suleiman Galadima, JSC, CEO, to fast track the trial of corruption and financial related crime in the country has been working as seriously with various heads of courts to bring about a significant rise in the dispensation of corruption and financial crime cases in the country. Even with the devastating impact of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, virtually the whole of 2020 and the better part of 2021, a total number of 746 corruption cases were dispensed with. Similarly, the number of forfeited non-cash recoveries made include 51 automobiles, 16 real estates, 11 barge or tugboats, and two schools. Between 2nd January and 14th of October 2021, a total number of 1,143 suspects were convicted of various corruption and financial related crimes, while the number of non cash forfeited assets has also arisen to include eight aircrafts, seven filling stations, 48 real estates, 
and 149 vehicles, among others. Still within the period under review, various amounts of cash for feature were made in millions of Naira, but recovered in different currencies ranging from Nigerian Naira, US dollars, British pounds, sterling, Euro, Indian rupees, and to reals, uh, CFP, and the Japanese uh, yen. During the 2021 legal year, the Supreme Court entertained a total number of 681 cases from pricing of motions and appeals. Out of these, we had 312 civil, 95 criminal, and five political, making a total of 412 motions. Similarly, the court considered a total number of 269 appeals comprising of 139 civil, 102 criminal, and 28 political. A total number of 216 judgments were delivered in the year. To a very large extent, I will confidently say that this school card is impressive, fascinating, and appreciable in view of the unpleasant events that dotted the legal year. I attribute the tremendous success recorded by the Honorable Court to the doggedness and team spirit exhibited by our selflessly hardworking, team-spirited brothers, brother justices, and the general staff. Even as we celebrate these successes recorded in past legal year, in the disposal of cases, all Nigerians need to be admonished on the imperative of being less litigious and the be more disposed to alternative dispute resolutions to free the courts of this unnecessary overstretching of both human and material resources. It is not every dispute that must find its way to the court, and it is not every matter that must come to the Supreme Court. Our laws have to be amended to make most appeals to terminate the Court of Appeal, which is competent to handle such appeals. Now, the court is also equipped, that is, the Court of Appeal is also equipped with the right materials and manpower to educate effectively and resourcefully. It has been said at different occasions, within and outside our shores, that Nigerians are the most litigious people on earth. Ideally, this uncharitable remark should ordinarily give a serious cause for concern. Yet, we seem to feel unperturbed about it. And every little disagreement, we rush to court. And in every lost case, especially in the political class, we rush to appeal court, even up to the Supreme Court. No matter how infinitesimal the issue might be, in most cases, the judicial officers are always at the receiving end with fusillade of vitriolic beings heaped on them and even threats to their lives. In every dispute, only one party must win. And winning could come after intense legal fireworks that is transparent, based on subsisting laws of the land, uninhibited legal representations, and the case conferences. 
It is so funny to see a party that won its case today and they praised the judiciary lavishly, but wasted no, no moment to condemn and they castigate the same judiciary when a case is lost the next day. How long shall we continue this way? If we really want to make progress as a nation and collectively build a virile legal framework that will serve our interest to the best of its ability, we must begin to have a rethink. We are not only here to celebrate the new legal year, but to equally speak truth to ourselves and also urge ourselves of most of our wrongdoings and misadventures. The agglomeration of these problems and mindset has largely accounted for several appeals that are currently pending in the Supreme Court. On 15th of June 2021, I issued a new practice direction for the Supreme Court to further fast track the administration of criminal appeals and the quick determination of interlocutory appeals. It is to be cited at the Supreme Court of Nigeria computation of time and payment of default fees, just in strike period exemption, practice direction 2021. It was indeed a moment of felicitation and a remarkable joy when the administration of criminal justice bill, as it was then, was assented to precisely on May 14, 2015. Unfortunately, six years down the line, there is really not much to cheer about, particularly in the area of holistic implementation. I must admit that this is indeed a very sad narrative that is not suitable for the ears to see the list. It's equally sad to note that Nigeria has inadvertently earned a reputation for churning out several laws that are either partially implemented or not implemented at all. The indicating, uh, indicating narrative must change from this moment, as I am very optimistic that concerned effort should be made in the bringing to the conference table the various stakeholders in the administration of criminal justice in the country with a view to identifying those notable impediments to the success of most of the laws in the justice sector. It is interesting to note that the administration of criminal justice proposals converse a merger of the provisions of the two principal uh, legislations, Criminal Procedure Code, CPC, applicable in the southern Nigeria, into one principal federal act with a view to applying it uniformly in all federal courts across the entire federation, and at the same time, reserve the subsisting criminal procedures. Even though we see ACJA as a major boost to the criminal justice system in the country, the effective implementation of its provisions, like I stated earlier, has remained a major cog in the wheel of progress. In one of its provisions, for instance, the Act sets time limit for carrying out investigations, arraignment, and prosecutions of criminal suspects. In the same vein, it mandates the police to record every confessional statement offered a suspect to the police in the course of investigation in video, or the statement should be endorsed by a legal practitioner as a way of increasing the incidence of use of force or torture to compel suspects to confess to crimes 
that they may not have committed. In all sincerity, are we really adhering to these provisions and the general tenets of the Act? We urgently need to conscientize ourselves and do a cursory self-assessment to turn a new leaf because we cannot keep repeating the same method and expect to get a different result. Nigeria as a country has done too many experiments. That primordial mindset must be changed in order to permit modernization to occupy a place in our hearts. Even with the agja, I still will suggest that our entire criminal laws should be thoroughly appraised and updated so that those antiquated aspects that are no more in tandem with modern trends can be changed. This exercise has to be carried out regularly to completely stamp out those obsolete criminal laws that are literally offensive to modern civilization. It is no more secret that technology is first changing the face of law practice across the world, and we must rise up to face the reality. I do not think we have invested much in legal technology. We counted among the frontline legal practitioners across the world. As it is now right, right, most law firms have moved from client facing and the back office functions to the cloud. An investment in cloud te uh, technology is an investment in our future and the relevance of law practice in Nigeria. We must brace up first the reality of the times so that we will not be sailing against the tide. Our current generation of lawyers is expected to be IT driven and must be able to effectively communicate and operate in that language globally. Like I said during the conference organized in Uyo, Akwa Ibom State in June this year, <coughs> by the Nigerian Association of uh, Sectional Legal Practice MBA, the legal field <coughs> is no more the exclusive preserve of the law firm. As routine high volume legal work is now outsourced to alternative legal services providers, services. As if we look around uh, today, we will see that more people are now participating in local, national, and global activism through every available social media platform to effectively push social problems and the gaps to the forefront. I want to use this occasion to call on the executive, the legislature, and of course, we in the judicial to work assiduously to better the lot of the citizenry. We can achieve more if we work in harm. There must be some touch of panic and the fineness in the way and the manner we handle issues that have to do with the lives and welfare of our fellow human beings. It is the insensitivity of some of our conduct as leaders that have brought us to where we are today. I therefore urge all the stakeholders of the Nigerian project to reconcile with our conscience so that we can begin to adhere and align our actions with its dictates in order to evolve an egalitarian society where everything will be done for the ultimate good of everyone and not a select few. This underlines the operative of making policies and those that are in tandem with public interest. The standards of human conduct 
as well as the functioning of government and the government instrumentalities are tacitly accepted and acknowledged to be for the collective good and order of society and also for the well-being of the citizens. Anything considered fit and proper for the generality of the citizens should automatically translate to what we leaders should ordinarily choose if we so clearly, though rationally, and acted disinterestedly and impartially. That is the right instrument that we should always be applying in situations involving a conflict of interest or a problem of defending or interpreting broader or longer range consideration against special or more immediate factors. It has to a large extent won acceptance in the context of a functionally differentiated political system and a modern bureaucratized society that is a strong tradition of constitutionalism and rule of law. Permit me to use this medium to call on our esteemed legislature to intensify efforts in making people oriented laws. In the same vein, the various ministries, departments, and agencies under the executive arm she show more than a passing interest in the general being of the citizenry by executing all the laws made without any selectivity, exclusionism, or isolationism. As for us in the judiciary, this is a reminder of the obvious. Interpreting the law the way it should be and with the fear of the Almighty God at the center of our heart. When all these renewed commitments and efforts are properly harnessed by the three arms of government, Nigeria will surely be better for it, and our national pride would instantly be reinvigorated and eloquently proclaimed to the global community. The task before us as leaders is quite enormous and daunting. We cannot afford to feel our country as all eyes are on us to see how well we can help in the managing and even harnessing our obvious differences and put them into something productive and beneficial for all. The time to sit on the fence is over. As it is often said, the risk of doing nothing can never be an ideal option. The future could only be fair to those who have prepared for it. My lords, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say for the Optimist time that the rank of senior advocate of Nigeria comes with immense prestige and the greater responsibilities as well. Those conferred with the rank automatically become members of the inner bar and revered apostles of the Temple of Justice. It is an honor to conferee. It is an honor no conferee can afford to take for granted. The Legal Practitioners Privileges Committee painstakingly screened and meticulously assessed all the documents submitted by the applicants before arriving at its decision. Even though there is no human system that could be adjudged as infallible, at least concerning the efforts put in place by the committee, I can beat my chest and say boldly that they have done an excellent job. 
I sincerely appreciate your dedication, commitment, and sacrifice throughout the duration of the exercise. The 2018 guidelines for the conformance of the rank of senior advocate in Nigeria require very high standards of merit from all the applicants vying for the award. Every requirement contained in the guidelines was observed before arriving at the final list. The number of applicants for 2021 senior advocate in Nigeria award was 159. Out of this number, 119 legal practitioners and 40 academics or academicians. The total number of qualified applicants after the preliminary screening was 130, comprising of 95 advocates and 35 acad academicians. After conducting the specified screening and the filtration exercises, which included a number of appearances in superior courts, recommendations by honorable justices of the Supreme Court and honorable justices of superior courts, chamber inspection, approval on eligibility and integrity of the candidates from the Nigeria Bar Association, body of senior advocates of Nigeria, and of course, the general public. Amongst others, the Legal Practitioners Privileges Committee came up with 72 successful candidates who by all standards can be regarded as eminently deserving of the rank of senior advocate in Nigeria. Out of this number, 10, are ah, from the academics, while 62 are advocates. This indeed is heartwarming and exciting, particularly for those who have accomplished this remarkable feat. On behalf of my learned brother, justices of the Supreme Court, and members of the Legal Practitioners Religious Committee, uh, congratulate the 72 successful senior advocates that have just been sworn in. Your success did not come easy. You have labored so hard for it, so you deserve every privilege, honor, and the pride that comes with the rank. The LPPC deserves enough commendation for endorsing the elevation of these 72 legal practitioners who have, by all standards, exhibited professionalism and excellence in legal practice. As senior advocates of Nigeria, you now carry humongous responsibilities on your shoulders. Immediately you step out of this courtroom, your behavior and the general conduct will now be publicly scrutinized by all those who come in contact with you. There's nothing like a private life for you anymore. As everything you do or you say, will now be thoroughly discussed, analyzed, assessed, and judged in the court of public opinion. Thus, you must watch your utterances, watch your actions, and watch your company, because you already have assumed the role of ministers of the court as you are now expected to assist the court to attain justice, equity, and the fairness in all its ramifications. You must display enormous integrity, self-discipline, high standard of advocacy as custodians of justice. 
the privilege you are conferred with today does not in any way make you demigods because humility and self-control are the main tools to engage in withering these terms of life. Evidently, some senior advocates have become casual visitors to courtrooms as they now see themselves to be too big to appear in court. This is the time that much is required from you. Our young generation of lawyers needs your mentoring and the guidance while the court needs your presence and the support lubricating the will of justice. Most of us here are aware of how tedious the process, uh, the process of conferring the rank of senior advocate in Nigeria and as fair legal practitioners have been on both the applicants, the LPPC and the Secretariat. Fortunately, a new era has come as the Privileges Committee has taken a giant step in pioneering the digital transformation of the legal industry, starting with the SUN confirmation process by partnering with a foremost legal tech solution company, Law Pavilion, to automate the application process end to end. Consequently, from 2022, applications for the confirmation to the rank of senior advocate will no longer be done manually, but digitally. The automation of the process will ensure that the application and the confirming process is seamless faster as it will now require lesser paperwork and either for the secretary and the LPPC. The automation will equally make it easier for returning applicants as they will not have to resubmit documents that they may have submitted in their earlier application. I'm confident that um, this innovation will certainly put the Nigerian legal industry in the same pedestal as those other advanced countries of the world where technology has been embraced to make processes faster and more efficient. The Nigerian Bar Association has been very active in the pursuit of justice in this country. The leadership of the association has maintained a mutually beneficial relationship with the bench and we are not taking that for granted in any way. I enjoy the current executive of the NBA under the able leadership of Mr. Apata to further strengthen the Kudu relationship. You must hold the banner of success aloft. I also much appreciate and applaud the two conferences we organized this year on public interest in the legal process in Ibadan Royal State and in Uyo, Akwaibam State, respectively. The quality of papers presented and the turnout of participants were quite exhilarating and overwhelming. Two, as our mental appetites were adequately nourished and energized. I urge you to keep leading that noble path of honor and distinction, particularly with our, manual, uh, with our annual bar conference that is always melting pot for legal minds. Before I end my speech, I would like to express my warm gratitude and appreciation to everyone that has decided to see, keep some very important shadows in order to be physically present here today to witness this special session officially signaling our new legal year. We are immensely grateful to all for according us this great honor and sacrifice, even at the expense of their very important schedules. 
I also wish to express my appreciation to the Honorable Minister of Justice and the Attorney General of the Federation, Master Walker Malami, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, the President of the Nigerian Bar Association, the Media Quarter, Professor Ben Mwabose, Senior Advocate, who is the Chairman of the Body of Senior Advocates of Nigeria, and of course the spokesperson for the newly conferred Senior Advocates of Nigeria, Professor Wei. Ajagbe Toriola, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, for graciously accepting our invitation to address this very important gathering. Thank you very much for spending your gracious time with us. I wish you journey message back to our respective destinations. Thank you. To be given the singular honor of addressing this distinguished assembly on this special occasion of the confirmation of the rank of senior advocate on deserving recipients and members of the bar. My Lord, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I seize this opportunity to first of all thank the Almighty God for making this day possible for all of us to be here in good health and sound mind. I also appreciate His Lordship, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Honorable Justice Dr. Ibrahim Tampo, Mohammed CFR, for his outstanding leadership prowess, evident in the way and manner he pilots the affairs of the nation's apex court and the entire judiciary as third arm of the federal government of Nigeria, in spite of the emerging challenges foisted us by the COVID-19 pandemic, growing insecurity and dwindling econ economy. The enormous task of keeping the bar and the bench working in synergy and synchrony has also been satisfactorily accomplish under your watch. This ceremony affords the bar and the bench the opportunity to reaffirm their commitment towards upholding the canons of the rule of law, continuous evolution of our legal system, and the preservation of our hard-won democracy. It is worth noting that the process that finally culminated in the selection and elevation of 72 out of the original shortlist of about 130 lawyers for this coveted rank, though others, was transparent and fair. I seize this opportunity to appreciate members of the LPPC for a job well done. From available statistics, it is clear that there has been an ex exponential leap in the number of qualified awardees for the rank. With each passing year, a situation that has become a source of concern to BOSAN, the body of senior advocates of Nigeria. Though not acting as, as LPPC's advocate on this issue, I wish to assure BOSAN that the elevation of new members to the rank of SAN will always follow due process, and deserving members should not be shut out, only because there are too many for a given year, as that will be discriminatory and unconstitutional, in my opinion. Pursuant to this, you may wish to recall that the 2018 guidelines for the confinement of the rank of senior advocates of Nigeria and all matters pertaining to the rank which was published in the Federal Republic of Nigeria Official Gazette number 112, Volume 105, particularly provides in Section 1 of the guidelines that the award of the rank of senior advocate is a privilege awarded as a mark of excellence to members of the legal profession who are in full-time legal practice 
and have distinguished themselves as advocates and have made significant contribution to the development of the legal profession in Nigeria. At this juncture, my Lord, permit me to appreciate the cooperation of my Lords and indeed all tasks of the judiciary in helping the federal government attain its mandate of good governance, which have immensely contributed to the development of our legal profession in this period of COVID-19 pandemic. Most courts have adopted and perfected the process of virtual court sittings, while the place of training and retraining of our judges on the use of ICT for the COVID and post-COVID judicial errors is in top jail. My lords, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, please permit me at this juncture to heartily congratulate our new senior advocates of Nigeria who have, who have just been sworn in. Whether you are lawyers from the academic category or lawyers from the advocates category, the same merit stands out among you. You are, you are all the common denominator. Your years of toil and labor, excellent legal services, outstanding academic research, impeccable advocacy, positive impact on fellow lawyers and judges you have appeared before, reliable solutions to novel legal issues, and commendable integrity worthy of this no no noble profession. All this clearly established each and every one of you as deserving of this prestigious ranking. I therefore charge you all to remain the shining leading forces in the practice of law within and outside the country. I must, however, quickly add that there are corresponding duties and responsibilities that go with your new rank. Kindly note that as senior advocates of Nigeria, you have a duty to exhibit the highest form of decorum, discipline, and dedication to the cause of justice, which forms the basic ethics of the legal profession. This we must all, at all times, uphold, since the younger lawyers look up to us as, as role models, inspirers, teachers, and life coaches. I therefore urge all our new learned silk to work towards these ideals, as well as the fortification of the rule of law in all aspects of our lives and to ensure that justice, justice prevails at all times. We cannot af afford to fail the younger generation. My Lord, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I thank my Lord, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, once more for the kind invitation to be part of this ceremony. With much anticipation, I look forward with passion to a more fruitful confirmant ceremony in future. For, for the last few years, and I from 2016, the judiciary has been the whipping boy. It has been you know, the object of ridicule and attack from the executive particularly. The Lord will recall how your brother justices' houses were invaded, how their doors were broken on the pretext of executing warrant of arrest or such warrants. Again, it's happened again in 2021, 29th of October. I am sure your worship must have been embarrassed and completely uh, humiliated because. I'm sure you did not know, and the executive will not have told you. 
The security agencies who carried out the operation did not mean well for the judiciary. They may have done so for one reason or the other. I want to thank your Lordship for reaffirming or re-engineering or restrengthening the rights of Nigerians with respect to such warrant and such warrants issued by magistrates. They probably were deceived. But thank God, my Lord, that it did not succeed. If they had succeeded, everybody would have taken credit for such heinous things. My Lord, the safety and security of judicial officers is the only security for the continuous constant democracy that we are managing organizing, I mean, that we are going through in this country. Under the constitution, there are three arms of government. Executive, judiciary, and the legislature. None is superior to the other. And thank you, sir, for the statement you made that gave us courage as a bar that judiciary is not, is, is not uh, a, a servant of any other arm of government. It confirms that the bar, the bench, we are speaking with one voice. It is not enough, my lord, for the Secretary of Police to say that they have arrested um, some people. My lord, we are demanding prosecution of these people, if it is true that they have been identified as the um, as the culprits of the incident. We are not saying them, we are not saying they are criminals now, but they are culprits of the unfortunate assault on judiciary. So we are demanding, my lord, that immediately the IDP should charge these people to court. The world is waiting to see and hear who these people are. And, my lord, they will be guaranteed fair hearing and fair trial, notwithstanding that they have assaulted the judiciary. My lord, I want to go to the next issue of the senior advocates of Nigeria. Permit me to say, sir, that on behalf of the body of senior advocates, we commend the exercise that has just been concluded that brings about 72 of us colleagues into the inner bar. We are not opposed at any time to deserving legal practitioners from being appointed senior advocates of Nigeria. The body of senior advocates merely reminding your lordship of the need to firm up the regulations. And I'm aware that the Legal Practitioner Privileges Committee is reviewing its, uh, its regulations and guidelines. I was very pleased to hear that you have introduced technology into the process. I am aware sir, that the process this year was laborious. I went through it in my bedroom. <laughs> and I thank you, sir. I am very grateful to your Lordship for honoring our colleagues who are here. My Lord, we cannot have more, no, we cannot have enough senior advocates. Every year, we bring about 4,000 new green wigs. They need the mentoring, the guidance, and leadership of senior advocates. And my Lord, essentially in this country now, except with few people like my president, who are making millions and billions of naira in commercial transactions. 95% of lawyers in this country are still court-oriented. And that's why you are saying, sir, that we should encourage less litigation. I wish I could say that. Because the constitution guarantees right of access to court to ventilate whatever is your grievance. Perhaps, my lord, now is the time for the judiciary to look at the alternative dispute resolution mechanism, even in the Supreme Court. Your lordship will recall that there was a case we had before your lordship in which several millions of naira were involved. You said, go and sit down with yourself and sort it out. 
And we did sort it out with my learning friend. We sorted it out. So even the Supreme Court, alternative decision is not uh, out of place. So therefore, my Lord, I commend your Lordship, the LPPC, for a great job done, and we wish you well. But be assured, sir, that at any given time, the body of senior look is ready, is available, and willing you know, to partner with the body with a view to getting the best. I can see, my Lord, that the 72 of them you have chosen, they are the best, including Tori Allah, you are my good friend. Even though he's as old as my uh, uncle. Therefore, my Lord, one other point I want to make, if you permit me, sir, is that the welfare of judicial officers at all level. May I have your presence, please? May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? My Lord, I'm saying with respect, sir, that the welfare of judicial officers at all levels in this country deserves a review. At the legal year ceremony of the Court of Appeal, the president of the Court of Appeal made disclosures that gave me sleepless night for days. How can a judge, a justice of the Court of Appeal, hand some salary, the same salary for 12 years, for 15 years? In the last 12 years, there has been no review of your salary and condition of service. Why is that so? Because the executive will thrust an envelope to the judiciary through the budget office. You either take it or leave it. Now, Lord, the concern does not say that the executive must, of necessity, determine about the uh, budget proposal. No, sir. No, sir. Agbakuba went to court and says that the judiciary is an independent body. And he was given judgment to the effect that executive has no right to process or to, to prepare or to interfere in the budget allocations of the judiciary. So, my Lord, I want the Nigeria Judicial Council to be courageous enough to approach the legislature for appropriation of judiciary in the country. Again. At the, at the legal year of the National, of the Federal Court of Appeal, the Honorable Attorney General told the whole world that they are looking at the uh, review of salary of judicial officers. And with respect, sir, permit me to say, I told him that it does not lie in his mouth to say that the executive will re review the salaries and conditions of service of judicial officers. It is the responsibility of National Judicial Council. They may do so, the judicial NJC may do so in collaboration with the executive. But the primary body that has a right to appropriate is the legislature. So, if the executive allow legislature to appropriate to the judiciary what is due to it as a, an arm of government. Therefore, my Lord, I thank my learned friend and members of the uh, Judiciary Committee in the Senate and House of uh, Representatives for, for their concern for judiciary, my Lord, there is an opening for us to relate directly with the legislature. And I want to believe that between now and March, the condition of service of judicial officers in the country must be revealed. And I urge your Lordship to press the appropriate button with the legislature. Now, to my other friends who are coming to the inner bar, I be on behalf of the our chairman, Professor Benoit Boise, and all the seniors in the body of senior advocates, I welcome you. And I want to remind you of the orientation that was given to you last week by the body of SAN, the lectures and all the ethical and professionalism that we spoke about. We are the leaders in the legal profession. We, the senior advocates, are leaders, and nobody can take that from us. And therefore, to whom much is given, much is expected. My Lord, the Chief Justice of Nigeria says it is coveted rank. It is an enviable rank. If you must arrogate yourself, wearing silk, wearing full bottom wig, you must also be ready to sacrifice for the good of the judiciary and the 
uh, Administration of Justice in Nigeria. I know that you participate in your local branches of the NBA. You need to do more. You need to employ more juniors. Although I have always told you, you must charge appropriate fees as senior advocates. And it's when you charge appropriate fees that you can get more juniors to work with you. Since 1999, judiciary has been the only hope that has sustained our democracy. Various decisions of this court in particular have established, interpreted, and made meaningful our constitutional democracy. I urge this court, my lord, not to, not to relax in, stamping, in interpreting our constitution in such a way that the family fathers of Nigeria will be happy. I thank your lordship. This distinguished you. audience, made up of my lords, made up also of members of the bar, and those persons so privileged to be worthy of calling to the inner bar today. This event has held annually for many decades, but its essence has not lost its savour. That members of the bar and the bench sit once every year in the highest court of our, court of our nation to evaluate the progress made in the administration of justice in the past year and to set targets for the year ahead bears witness to the positive evolution of this very important arm of government and very important feature of our democracy. Also, the fact that many office holders have stood here to speak at events like this also reminds us of the truism in the fact that positions are transient as we are all bound to leave the stage one day. But the institutions created by the provisions of our laws will continue to endure. The tradition of this event has historically been twofold. On the one hand, the Lord, we gather in anticipation of the, shall I say, the state of the judiciary address from the Honorable the Chief Justice of Nigeria, who is also the chairperson of the National Judicial Council. On the other hand, we congregate for the conferment of the prestigious rank of senior advocate of Nigeria on persons who have been found so worthy by the Legal Practitioners Privileges Committee. Whenever we listen to the Chief Justice of Nigeria address us on the scorecard of the judiciary in the preceding year, it gives one reason to be grateful to the Lord God Almighty and to you, the distinguished justices and judges of our courts, for your efforts in dispensing justice against all odds. It also assists us at the bar to draw up our list of deliverables for the year and to identify areas where we can be of further assistance to the judiciary in the administration of justice. The bar typically goes home after the speech of the Lord, the CJM, with a to-do list which it takes off in the course of the ensuing legal year. My lords, in the last few months, I have used the rare privilege afforded me as president of the Nigeria Bar Association to deliver, on behalf of the bar, addresses at different fora, which have dwelt on some of the very topical issues confronting the administration of justice in Nigeria. At the maiden edition of the legal year of the Court of Appeal, I did not mince words when urging our justices to mind their courts jealously against the invasion of those who are only intent on perverting the cause of justice. I have also at some point called for the improvement in the welfare of all judicial officers in Nigeria. More recently, my lord, at the All Nigeria Judges Conference held last month, I called on our judges to take up the courage to confront the monster of judicial corruption tarnishing the image of the judiciary. My lords, I remain firmly of the belief, and this is the guiding philosophy of the Nigeria Bar Association, which I am privileged to lead at this time, that the bar must continue to advocate for a judiciary that works for all because of the very critical role that this institution plays in the affairs of any nation. It is a sacred duty 
we the bar owe to posterity. My lords, the new legal year ceremony affords us the opportunity to appraise the events of the past legal year and, it, it, and its effects on the justice sector and the administration of justice. Issues concerning the rule of law, the independence of the judiciary, the tripartite relationship between the bar, the bench, and the public, the regulation of the legal profession, good governance, and other related matters. It also provides us with the very welcome opportunity to rededicate ourselves to those values and principles on which justice is founded, including respect for the rule of law, upholding the Nigerian constitutions and constitution and other laws made there under, truth, honesty, incorruptibility, integrity, courage, and the entrenchment of social and economic justice, etc. It is in this regard that I must remind your Lordship that the judiciary in Nigeria today is confronted by a myriad of challenges which have resulted in loss of confidence in the justice sector on the part of the public. There is increasingly the widespread perception that the common man cannot get justice in our courts. While we, as the bar and the bench, will continue to confront and call out external elements who we perceive to be responsible for some of the travails of the judiciary, we must of necessity also embark on a measure of introspection, some soul searching of sorts, to determine if and how we may have unwittingly contributed to our current situation and explore corrective or remedial steps. In undertaking this soul searching exercise, my lords, I urge you to bear in mind the fact that times have changed and are changing, and we must therefore adapt to these changes. The templates that may have successfully worked decades ago may not necessarily work today. We must therefore be responsive and dynamic if we are to meet with the yearnings and aspirations of society, society that we seek to serve. My Lord, this introspection we refer to must of necessity include taking another look at how judicial officers are appointed. This is a foundational issue. In this regard, permit me to make bold to say that there is nothing inherently wrong with appointing magistrates, chief registrars, and indeed the children and relatives of past or serving judicial officers as judges or justices of our courts provided that they fulfill the constitutional requirements for such judicial office. It is, however, problematic where the selection process is considered by many, even by some, to be opaque, or not objective, or not open to scrutiny. We must therefore borrow a lead from other jurisdictions by further opening up the process with a view to ensuring that anyone aspiring to this high office is subjected to a rigorous, transparent, and clearly defined process which will demonstrate his or her suitability for the office. This is the only way to silence the critics and restore the much needed public confidence in the process of selection of judicial officers. These reforms are critical to ensure that the judiciary in Nigeria remains relevant and fit for purpose. We must also take another look at the continuous training of our judicial officers. We are, of course, aware of the good job that the National Judicial Institute is doing in this regard. Albeit, my lords, we must humbly call on you to continue to invest in the progressive training of judicial officers, especially newly appointed ones. The beauty of knowledge is that it is never ending. And in an ever-changing world characterized by continuous changes and transformation in diverse areas of the economy, our courts must continue to be equipped with the human and material resources to meet the needs of an increasingly sophisticated society. In the same vein, we call on the National Judicial Council not to relent in its effort to read our benches of corruption and to continue to seriously tackle the issue of 
the discipline of judicial officers. While it has always been the position, and it remains the position of the bar, that the process that is prescribed by law for investigating and disciplining errant judicial officers and to preserve the dignity that attaches to the office of judicial officers must be handled by the NJC to secure the independence of the judiciary. The NJC must, however, continue to utilize and constantly oil the internal self-regulating powers vested in it by law to weed out the few bad eggs who give the judiciary a bad name. This is the only way to strengthen public confidence in the institution. As always, your lordship can rest assured of the NBA's utmost cooperation in this regard. We shall also not cease to make a case for the need for a truly independent judiciary, especially in a country such as ours. As the NBA has consistently maintained, the judiciary is of prime importance in the life of any nation, and an independent judiciary is crucial to opposing the rule of law in a democratic society. The concept of the rule of law, consolidation of our democracy, protection of human rights, providing the enabling environment for foreign direct investment and economic growth, etc., cannot be sustained without a reliable, effective, and efficient judiciary. This entails the provision of adequate funding that the judiciary requires to conduct its business, enabling the courts to freely decide cases without external influence and putting in place the, mecha the mechanism to ensure that orders and judgments of our courts are respected by all and sundry. Having, sa having said this, the judiciary must also exhibit its readiness to embrace global best practices in the conduct of its affairs. My lords, let me now turn to the issue of the ignoble actions of some overzealous, overzealous security agencies and their enablers in government, who invaded the residence of the second most senior justice of our nation's highest court. It is the most audacious affront on the sanctity and independence of the judiciary in our recent history. This invasion, without any justifiable reason or motive, can be likened to the inglorious invasion of the Capitol Hill in the United States of America on the 6th of January, 2021. The United States has very correctly viewed this invasion not just as an assault on members of Congress and Senate, but also as an insult, an assault on the integrity and institution of the legislative arm of the U.S. government. It is for this reason that the actions of the invaders were not viewed simply as a protest, but as an act of domestic terrorism. The time is now, my lords, to check every act of domestic terrorism in Nigeria and to bring to justice anyone who is found to have engaged in such. The institution of the Nigerian state and all the officers created by the Constitution are bigger than any and every Nigerian. Those who are entrusted with the powers of state must act within the bounds of their statutory powers. Any action that is not founded in law in a democratic setting must be viewed with extreme seriousness. 